Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. and welcome to this session on monitoring stakeholder engagement. I'll start with a few words on, on the background to stakeholder engagement. Before PMBOK 5, stakeholder engagement was non-existent. It used to be part of the then knowledge area called communications management. But then PMBOK 5 came and it split man communications management into two separate knowledge areas. One was retained as communications management and other was named as stakeholder engagement. Because the root knowledge area of both the new, newly created knowledge areas is or was the same, therefore one found a lot of similarities between these two knowledge areas. For example, similarities in inputs and outputs of processes, although, although the tools and techniques uh, differed slightly. So let's look at this newly created uh, knowledge area called stakeholder engagement. Stakeholder engagement comprises four processes. One identifies stakeholders, which is in the initiation process group and it leads to a very important output, the stakeholder register. I'll talk about it in a little more detail later. Then two planning areas, plan stakeholder engagement and manage stakeholder engagement, and a very important output in the form of stakeholder engagement plan. And then the sole uh, process in the monitoring and control process group monitors stakeholder engagement. As I said earlier in the video on communications, monitoring communications, in my opinion, uh, monitoring is an integral part of managing. Why PMBOK refers to stakeholder engagement as monitoring stakeholder engagement and not controlling, it gives more or less the same reasons as it gave in, in the case of communications, monitoring communications. And that main rationale is that a project manager cannot control a process involving human interaction. Because stakeholders are humans, lot of interaction there, therefore a project manager at best can monitor stakeholder engagement and cannot control. But one, when one looks at the uh, TORs of this process, uh, one finds such strong words as tailors and modifies stakeholder engagement strategies and plans. Modif modifications are nothing but changes and whenever you are talking of changes, you're talking of either corrections or corrective actions or preventive actions or defect repairs, etc. And they all fall into the greater domain of control actions. So this statement clearly points towards controlling. And again, when it says maintaining and increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of the stakeholder engagement activity, again, there is a strong reference to the, to the control aspect. Uh, it has a strong leaning towards control rather than confining it just to monitoring. In fact, when we discuss uh, inputs and outputs, I'll further dwell on this particular aspect as to why it is essentially controlling stakeholder engagement and not just maintaining stakeholder engagement. With that uh, little preamble, let's uh, move on to the actual process of monitoring stakeholder engagement. These are the permanent uh, inputs and outputs in management plan, we of course require the stakeholder management plan, the permanent output in the form of lessons learned register, uh, work performance data and OPA. And on this side, o WP, uh, the data converting into information, WPI, the, the change request, and the rest are just the updates or amendments to the documents, which are inputs on, on the left-hand side. Giving you an example of WPD uh, in, the, in, the, in the realm of stakeholder engagement, it could be the current engagement uh, level 
of a particular stakeholder. For example, if a stakeholder is indifferent, you might like to go and have a look at the stakeholder assessment matrix and find out where it should be. The fact that he's indifferent is WPD. When you go to the assessment grid and find that he should have been supportive of the project, you find a variance between. That is his indifference as compared to him being supportive. So there is a variance and this variance, if it uh, has implications in terms of cost or other matters, then of course a change request has to be initiated. So this could be one example uh, when it comes to WPD, WPI and change request. Now looking at uh, other inputs, resource management plan. We require a resources management plan for, for the simple reason that we want to know how to manage the internal stakeholders like the project team, uh, which is uh, very nicely articulated in a document called Team Charter. And since Team Charter is an output of the resources management plan, so it is required as an input. Communications management plan is required because communication management plan carries the plans and strategies to communicate with the stakeholders. Amongst uh, project documents, we require project, doc uh, project communications, project communications with the stakeholders, like reports, minutes of the meeting, emails, etc. Uh, the sort of communication that takes place between uh, the project team and the stakeholders or the project manager and the stakeholder. Then the risk register we require because there could be risks attributed to uh, concerning the stakeholders. Like what if the contractor drops out? What if the consultant becomes uh, unavailable? Or what if a particular stakeholder starts creating difficulties? So all these scenarios are listed in the risk register and therefore we need uh, this particular document. Stakeholder register we require because it classifies the stakeholders. It, it puts them into different categories based on which uh, different uh, the, the strategies would be devised to handle or engage those stakeholders, which is done in the stakeholder management plan. So it is for these reasons that these documents are required. And on the other, other side, of course, uh, we have the documents. I have all uh, the amendments to the documents, which are on the left-hand side. And I have already explained how WPD converts to WPI and what can be a, a, change, a typical change request in monitoring stakeholder engagement. I would now want to refer to a concept uh, uh, which is not subscribed in the PM box, but I think uh, it is important. And that is the concept of stakeholder engagement baseline. I just mentioned that you have to initiate a change request. Change request for what? change a request on some variance. And you only develop a variance or you only find a variance if you compare the plan with the baseline. So what is the stakeholder engagement baseline? In my opinion, the stakeholder register, the stakeholder management plan, the communications management plan, and the team charter collectively constitute the stakeholder engagement baseline. And the reasons for that are tabulated uh, in this table. Uh, for instance, we require stakeholder register because that carries the stakeholders classification based on their interest, based on their legitimacy, based on their power, etc. We require stakeholder engagement plan because Based on these classifications, we devise strategies on how to engage a particular stakeholder. 
Once we have done that, then it's the turn of communications. We devise plans and strategies to communicate with the stakeholders. And if they are the internal stakeholders, we must know how to manage them. And that uh, we find out, or the guidelines for that are given in the team chart. So in my opinion, again, I stress, it's not given in the PM book, but it is important to have it. These four documents collectively make the stakeholder engagement baseline. With that, let's look at the different inputs and outputs uh, to the plan. Uh, this I have already described. Why do we require stakeholder engagement plan, resource management plan, the communications management plan, lessons learned register, stakeholder issue log. I did not mention issue. Well, when we talk of issues, issues are between the project stakeholders. These could be internal issues, or these could be issues between internal stakeholders, or issues between external stakeholders, or between internal and external stakeholders. And they are all documented in the issues log. Therefore, we need uh, this document as well. Project communications and risk register, we have already talked about. WPD, I have given you an example. Uh, these are your company's policies. Um, with respect to, let's say, because it is stakeholder engagement, so it will give you good guidelines and policies on how to engage them. And this is your organizational culture and the internal and external environment, which will govern stakeholder engagement, your stakeholder engagement policies and strategies. Then we come to the outputs. Uh, it's uh, mostly updates. But here, I would like to dwell on one output, the change request. See what the PM box says. May include corrective and preventive actions to improve the current le level of stakeholder engagement. And I think uh, it is pretty obvious now that this process, if it includes corrective and pre preventive actions, which are control actions, Therefore, monitoring stakeholder engagement cannot just be confined to monitoring. It has to be control, control stakeholder engagement. These are very positive step-ins, very positive actions. And therefore, we just can't say that uh, we are dealing with stakeholder engagement by taking corrective and preventive actions. That would be a dichotomy unless we consider monitoring stakeholder engagement to be controlling stakeholder engagement. Uh, let's look at uh, the tools and techniques uh, for stakeholder engagement. Uh, as you know, PM Boc uh, 6, uh, one good aspect in terms, in the context of tools and techniques is that they have categorized all the tools and techniques into categories, like data analysis, data representation, communication skills, et cetera so that it becomes very it comes very clear as to what we are talking about in data analysis uh, the book has mentioned three types of tools alternative analysis as you know alternative analysis is when you carry out an analysis of all the options all the all alternatives available and you try to pick up one using different techniques and you have learned those techniques we uh, we discussed some of the techniques when we did uh, resources, uh, controlling resources, in quality as well. Then you did some while studying risk uh, uh, management in the second semester where you, where you learned AHP, et cetera, uh, in, uh, and, and many other occasions you, know, you are aware of. But in the context of st stakeholder engagement, alternative analysis means analysis of alternative strategies. Let us say there is a stakeholder who has become indifferent. How are you going to handle this stakeholder? Well, you could ignore him. You could uh, engage him. You could off offer him incentives. Uh, you could appease him. You could confront him. 
And of course, each of these strategies, which I have mentioned, have implications. So you carry out a thorough analysis of all these different uh, strategies and come up what is most suitable to handle or engage this particular uh, stakeholder. So that would be your engagement, that would be your alternative analysis. Then is a root cause analysis. Uh, we have done this as a complete subject, but in the, cost, uh, in the context of stakeholder engagement, you would want to find out the root, cause, root causes of a stakeholder who is not contributing positively to the project. He's unsupportive, he's indifferent, he's incommunicado, He's trying to create difficulties for the project manager. So you would like to look into these issues and find the root cause of his indifference, of his unfriendliness, or of his creating difficulties for the project. So that's the context of root cause analysis in this particular case. Then is the stakeholder analysis. Of course, root cause analysis is also a kind of stakeholder analysis. You as project manager would be doing a stakeholder analysis uh, by putting them, by classifying them uh, into different categories and we are going to learn uh, tools. Uh, you would classify them according to some of these tools uh, which are mentioned, below, mentioned here. Uh, you would like to carry out analysis of a new stakeholder who has, uh, who's, uh, who has a stake in your project, or you would like to review these strategies with the previous stakeholders. So all that would fall into the realm of stakeholder analysis. So that was uh, data analysis techniques. Now, then we come to data representation, the way we represent uh, data. Uh, we do it two ways. In fact, I'll take this one first. You would like to classify the stakeholders into different categories. And these are some of the models, and we are actually going to discuss these models in this session. And they could all, after classification, when the project starts or when the stakeholders start engaging with the project, then of course their assessment, which is done through a matrix. Again, we are going to discuss this matrix shortly. Then communication skills, uh, it's uh, stating the obvious uh, feedback, uh, we discussed the aspect of feedback uh, while discussing communication. Whenever important communication is sent to our stakeholders, try to get an acknowledgement so that uh, you are assured that number one, communication has been received by that stakeholder, and number two, he has understood that communication, hence the importance of uh, feedback. And then presentations make sure uh, whatever you present or communicate to the stakeholder is in the right mode, like a report, uh, like uh, a briefing, uh, like a PowerPoint presentation or a spreadsheet, so what, or a simple Word document or a combination of, of, of these tools. So choose the best possible way of presenting whatever you have to present uh, to the stakeholder. Interpersonal and team skills, uh, active listening, we discussed in the communication, very important. Cultural awareness and cultural sensitivity. As project manager, you have to be sensitive to the stakeholders' beliefs, culture, language, etc. If you are the project manager of a construction project, many of your workers would not like to work on a Friday. Please respect, uh, respect their decision not to work. Do not force them to work on a Friday. Leadership. 
The project manager has to display very strong leadership skills to both the internal as well as external stakeholders. Project manager has to resolve conflicts. He has to motivate the, his project, excuse me, his project team. He has to chair project review meetings with authority, control and confidence. All these things call for strong leadership. If the project manager is not a strong leader, he is likely to miss on all these aspects and create communication voids, understandings and conflicts. The project manager has to network with all the stakeholders. Networking as it is used in the common sense, nothing very peculiar about uh, stakeholders. Stakeholders also being humans and humans uh, holding important positions and wherever you work, you network with your peers, with your superiors, with your subordinates, you extract information, to share information, uh, etc. And in, uh, as far as stakeholders is concerned, networking will help you to assess their level of engagement. You, you would be able to sense whether this particular stakeholder is supportive of the project or is against the project or to what extent he's contributing uh, to the project or creating difficulties for the project. Then comes political awareness. Bigger the project, more the political wrangling within the project or amongst the stakeholders. There are often uh, political uh, wrangling, you can say a political wrangling between the, let's say, project manager and the project sponsor, uh, project sponsor and the PMO or head of the PMO, uh, between the donors and the project manager or the project sponsor, etc. On public sector projects, uh, there is political wrangling between the executing department and the parent ministry, and I personally experienced this while in charge of Gwadar Port. So a good, uh, a good project manager remains aware of all these political happenings and political leanings, leanings and uh, one cannot avoid that. Uh, so be conscious of the fact that you will be involved in political wrangling or become a victim of political wrangling uh, of others uh, to the detriment uh, of the project. So be aware of that. If you know that there is going to be political wrangling uh, or you're experiencing political wrangling, uh, you will obviously uh, work around that. But if you don't know that political wrangling is taking place, that will be detrimental uh, to your cause as the political as the project manager so remain aware of what is uh, what is happening around you then meetings uh, we have uh, discussed these uh, ad nauseum uh, in communication and elsewhere so i propose to skip that and move on to what are the data uh, representation tools uh, as i said I would, I would be discussing these. Okay, the first uh, data representation tool is stakeholder assessment matrix. As the project proceeds and the stakeholders start engaging with the project, not necessarily when the project actually starts, even it could happen in, even in the initiation phase or planning phase. So as soon as, and that's why we identify stakeholders very early in the initiation phase, because the stakeholders are going to engage, start engaging with the project very early. So if the stakeholders start engaging with the project very early, it is important to assess, start assessing their engagement level with the project. And this is usually done through 
this particular tool called the stakeholder engagement assessment matrix, uh, which uses five engagement levels, or let's say five types of uh, uh, stakeholders insofar as their engagement or relationship in the project is concerned. The dividing line between these is whether the project manager is or the stakeholder is aware of the project or not. If the project manager, if the sorry, beg your pardon, if the stakeholder is aware of the project, then one of these four would apply, one of these four engagement levels will apply to him. But if he's not aware, then he would fall into the character category or level of unaware. He's unaware of the project, what is happening on the project, and what are going to be the impacts of the project. Now, let's take these four, which means the stakeholder is aware of the project. But if he is unfriendly to the project, he is trying to create difficulties for the project. He speaks against the project. He is resistant to any change. He will be referred to as the resistant stakeholder. Here is a stakeholder who is sitting on the fence. He is neither supporting nor he is unsupporting. Then supportive stakeholder who is for the project. He's a friend of the project. He's talking well of the project. He's not trying to create any difficulties. He's not trying to create any issues supporting. And this is the best type of stakeholder who is fully engaged with the project in order to ensure its success now, obviously, those people who fall into this category are very few. It could be the project manager, the project sponsor, the head of the PMO, the customer, etc. They are the ones who are who fall into this category. Rest all stakeholders should fall into this category, and those who are in these categories, every attempt should be made to bring them into this category. Here is the grid which is used uh, for this purpose. Uh, let's say on a particular project, these are the three stakeholders. You would like them to be all supportive of the project. So D stand, standing for desired. You want the desired state or engagement state of these project uh, stakeholders to be supportive. And then you find out what is the current state of their engagement level. Given an example, this stakeholder is currently unaware of the project. This stakeholder is sitting on the fence, he's neutral, neither being negative nor being positive. And this stakeholder number three is supportive as was desired. Talking in terms of WPD, this is WPD. The current in, this stakeholder is unaware, WPD. This stakeholder is neutral, WPD. This stakeholder is supportive, WPD. Where should this stakeholder have been? D. So this is the gap. This gap, so this gap is your WPI, that is, you, you had desired this stakeholder to be supportive of the project, but currently he is unaware, and this gap exists. This is what WPI is. And what you have to do is reduce this gap or eliminate this gap by pushing this stakeholder, encourage him, encouraging him to take interest and support the project to bring him here. Tell this stakeholder, Hey, look, these are the implications of this project and the project needs your particular, your, your support. So why don't you jump on the, jump in the team and start contributing? So this is the gap. 
And of course, uh, you need to watch this stakeholder just in case he slips into neutrality or become resistant. So this is this in essence is uh, how stakeholder assessment matrix works. Next, uh, we discuss the classification uh, matrices or models. That was the assessment, uh, assessment model. That is when the stakeholders start engaging themselves with the project, then uh, looking at the assessment. This is, these models are before that, the classification models, uh, which you do as a part of stakeholder analysis, which we saw earlier on. Uh, these three models are two dimensional. They take uh, two variables like power and interest or power and influence or influence and impact. And they are in the form of a grid. This particular model, the stakeholder queue takes a third element. And that's why it is 3D. It takes into, cons takes into consideration power, interest, and attitude and we are we are going to discuss one of these three not all three and stakeholder queue also there is one uh, model which takes power legitimacy and urgency here legitimacy is legitim legitimate authority or legitimate interest in the project Whereas power is the ability to influence the project and it, it generally means in the negative sense uh, or the power to, or let's say the nuisance powers. This power is the nuisance power, although the book says it is the, it is the power to impose their will. It is generally in the negative context, context the power to impose their negative will. And then there is urgency. Those stakeholders who are in a hurry to seek, uh, to seek information uh, on the project. We are going to discuss uh, this model also. This is based on the Venn diagram, uh, which you would have studied in, in your high school. So let's take uh, the first one, uh, power and interest rate. We take uh, interest along the horizontal axis, power along the vertical axis, or you could interchange, uh, no problem with that. And you consider this area to be divided into four quadrants. And the first quadrant is where a stakeholder has low interest and low power in the project. So what do we do? Obviously, uh, because they have no power and very little interest, uh, they are not going to create any problems, nor they are going to contribute towards the project. So just monitor. Them. It is just like the watch list uh, of, of uh, risks. Uh, you keep referring back to the watch list to make sure or to see if any low risk is going to escalate. Likewise, you will off and on look at this category of uh, stakeholders just, just in case they gain more power or they gain more interest into the project. Generally speaking, uh, I would put uh, the media people into this. They have no power on a project. Uh, they have no interest on the project. Their interest is something else. Their interest is commercial or their interest is rating. But insofar as the project is concerned, they have no power other than perhaps the power to create a negative or positive publicity for the project. Otherwise, they really cannot do much about the project except raising hue and cry. And likewise, uh, they're not interested really. As I said, their interest lies somewhere. Their interest is commercial. So I would, I would put uh, media people over here, though you might like to discuss this aspect when we meet for the live session. Then we come to this category. They have no interest in the project, low interest, but they have a lot of power. You have to keep them satisfied. 
if you are doing a construction project in islamabad cda would fall into this category they have no interest in your project but they certainly have a lot of power any inspector would come and uh, leave you a notice stop work and answer this uh, irregularity and your work is stopped you have to keep the cda satisfied in that context uh, if you have taken uh, a loan from the bank for your project the bank would fall into this category the bank is not interested in your in project it is lot of power why bank is not interested if your project collapses you have already deposited bank guarantees or collaterals or you may have mortgaged things with the bank so bank is not interested in your project but it has lot of influence so it can shut the tap finances any time and again it holds your all your uh, bank guarantees etc which uh, it can in cash any time then is this category who have lot of interest in the projects but have unfortunately no power it is you and me the helpless citizens who have lot of interest in everything which goes around them but they have no power take islamabad and for about two to two and a half years islamabad was virtually shut down because of the metro project could we the citizens of islamabad do anything nothing but we did have lot of interest because if we had to commute and those all those uh, construction works and all that pollution uh, that it, that those construction works raised we had to pass through that and now we had to circumnavigate so for about two and two to two and a half years our lives were entirely changed our attitudes have entirely changed so in that case what do you do or let's say if because we were the citizens we were the stakeholders who were at the helm of affairs uh, the the deputy the commissioner uh, rahul pindi and uh, government of punjab so what were they doing they were giving they were keeping us informed they were serving us lollipops uh, giving giving us rosy pictures uh, so and if you see it in the reverse if you are the project manager and you have such stakeholders who have lot of interest but no power you will keep them informed but then there is this category who have both lot both power and lot and, and interest in the project and of course you will keep them satisfied <coughs> you will keep them satisfied and you will keep them informed or you could use one term you will manage them closely so what is management managing closely keeping these stakeholders informed and keeping them satisfied so that was the stakeholder classification uh, uh, power and interest grid model and of, as i said earlier they, you could take any two variables and make a grid you saw another two previously let's now look at a three dimensional grid where in addition to power and interest we have a third element for the attitude and i have tried to show the increasing amount or changing amount of uh, power attitude and impressed by this color code attitude red means negative attitude green means uh, good positive attitude so if you move from this direction to this direction uh, in the third dimension uh, you are going from positive from negative attitude to positive attitude uh, as far as power is concerned you are going from low power less power to high power and low interest to high interest because uh, these are the three dimensions Uh, or three elements these three elements can create nodes of a cube eight nodes of a cube as i said earlier the dictating element in the cube is the attitude so if you consider this side of the cube or near side of the cube this is the side of the cube where attitude is negative so i have tried to paint it Uh, red or pinkish red the reverse side of this cube 
is where the positive, the attitude is positive. So I have shot it green. And of course, lower being you are at low power and on the left means you have low interest. On this diagram, you would like your stakeholders to be sitting on the four nodes which are behind the green. You wouldn't like any stakeholder to be sitting on any of these nodes which are forward of the green in this particular diagram. So let's take this one, tripwire. Tripwire, as you know, it, it stands for Tibi. So here is a stakeholder who has a negative attitude. He has no interest and no power. But the moment he gains some power, he is going to give you a Tibi. He's going to trip you. So he's known as a tripwire. Here is a stakeholder who has lot of power and he has negative attitude. He is a ticking bomb. He can harm you anytime. This trip wire, if instead of power he gains, starts gaining interest in the project, he is only going to become an irritant to you. And this particular person, this particular stakeholder, if he with negative attitude develops power, gains power and develops interest in the project, he is going to be your nightmare uh, in the, on the project. He's going to be saboteur. Obviously the opposite as far as the back side of this cube is concerned, here all the attitudes are positive. But this particular stakeholder has neither any power nor any interest. He's, he's, he's sleeping, uh, not exactly sleeping, but uh, you would refer to him as sleeping. Why? Because he's, he has the power, but he's not utilizing that power by not taking that, any interest into the project. So he's a sleeping giant. So you have to wake him up so that he can take interest in the project. This is a friend of the project, but the point, the problem is he has only got interest. He has no power. Is it possible that you give him some power so that he becomes a real savior for your project? So in short, this cube tells you that you must have your stakeholders on the green side. Uh, this green side could be in front and the red side could be at the back in which case the direction of this arrow will be reversed. You want all your stakeholders to be sitting on the nodes of that side of the, of the cube where the, the, where the attitude is positive. You don't want any stakeholder to be sitting on that side of the cubes or sitting on the nodes of that side of the cube on which the attitude is negative. And this is also shown uh, in this uh, little diagram, as I said, uh, the dictating element here is attitude. In these four contexts, the attitude is negative, these four is positive, and of course, the cost for these particular types of stakeholders, uh, these are uh, the levels of power and interest. Next, we take the third type of uh, data representation model, which is, uh, which is referred to as the Sainz model. As you can see, this model is based on the Venn diagram. And it has three elements, power, legitimacy, and urgency. What is legitimacy? Legitimacy is, having legitimate authority in the project, like the project manager has legitimate authority, like the foreman, he has legitimate authority in the project and legitimate interest in the project, uh, like again, project manager, or he could be the customer, etc. So these are the stakeholders who have legitimacy in the project. These are the stakeholders 
who has the power to influence the project either positively or negatively but whenever we talk of the salience model uh, this power is taken in the negative context or in the context of nuisance value and these are the project managers who have the agency who have otherwise no business uh, but they have a lot of interest these are like the uh, like the media men uh, poking their nose into uh, every project uh, into every operation so th these are those people The fundamental about Venn diagrams is that the circles representing these elements, they cut each other or they overlap each other. And those overlaps have certain meanings. For example, look at these, this overlap. This means the stakeholders falling in this overlap will have both legitimacy and they will have power to influence. They will have power to reward, power to punish, or power to create hurdles. This project, uh, this stakeholder or these stakeholders have power as well as urgency. And if it is negative power, this lot will be a very dangerous type of stakeholders. Of particular concern are these type of stakeholders who have legitimacy, that means they have legitimate power and interest in the project, and they are always seeking information. Why they are important? Because they can, on gaining a bit of power, where will they promote themselves? Into this, where they will enjoy all the three things, legitimacy, urgency, and power. In fact, these overlaps and non-overlaps have names. As I said, this category is referred to as dangerous, having both urgency and nuisance power these are the dominating type not only that they have power their power is sanctioned that means it is legitimate power or legitimate interest they are dominating and then these are the dependent uh, stakeholders those stakeholders who have legitimacy legitimate power legitimate authority etc and they also have always urgent need for information. They're hungry stakeholders. And why I said they're very important? Because the moment they get a little power, they get themselves into this area, which is core. The stakeholders in this area enjoy everything, power, legitimacy, and urgency. So obviously, these are the most stake, important stakeholders then comes this category the dominating type because of this now the dominating are now restricted in this so they are the next important these are the people you must watch very carefully because i say again they can easily enter into the core area these are the dangerous stakeholders you have to keep them satisfied. These could be your creditors. These could be CDA, making an analogy with the previous example. These people would be those people who can shut your financial tab, who can stop your work, who can serve you notices. So they fall into this category. So as you say again, your bank creditors, your donors, uh, CDA uh, in Islamabad, etc they fall into this category. Over here, obviously enjoying all three, could be your project manager, your, could be your project sponsor, head of the PMO, and depending upon the project, it could also be your, it could be also be the customer. And of course, anything lying outside this uh, uh, is a, is a non-stakeholder. So here is the, by the way, Latent. Uh, this is referred to as latent. That means it has the power, but it is uh, not uh, exercising that power. So he uh, and nor he is trying to create. Uh, he is not seeking any information from you. So we 
call or we refer to these stakeholders as latent. So they are, as they say, harmless stakeholders. Though they have power, they are not bothering you. So it is just like if you are going in the jungle and there is a shear, so long uh, you do not provoke the shear, he is not going to harm you. And then these are the stakeholders who have legitimacy, but they are not, uh, they have the power, they have the interest, but again, they are not uh, bothering you by not exercising their authority or not seeking any urgent information. So these are the discretionary stakeholders. So discretionary and latent stakeholders, they fall into the same category. In fact, latent stakeholders are also referred to as dormant, the sleeping giants, if you refer to the previous stakeholder cube uh, model. So they are the sleeping giants or the dormant stakeholders. And obviously, in this case, your strategy would be not to wake that. In, in stakeholder cube, you are required to wake up that sleeping giant. Over here, uh, it, do not wake him up. Do not provoke that share who is in the jacket. And this core category is also referred to as definitive. And if you use these two terms, then you can see every, every category now starts with D. Dormant, dominating, definitive, dangerous, demanding, dependent, discretionary. So everything is now starting with D. And here is the summary, uh, which I have already discussed with you. Here's the dependent. He is prone to alignment. Which alignment? He can go in there, so keep him informed. Most important stakeholders, dangerous, keep them satisfied. Uh, and these are the uh, harmless uh, stakeholders. Uh, therefore, uh, obviously, uh, just monitor, give them regular reports, send them lollipops, etc. Send them good wishes present rosy pictures to them and uh, you are okay. So that ladies and gentlemen uh, were the three categories of models, the grid model, the cube model, three dimensional, and uh, this model based on Venn diagram. The grid models use two elements, the cube uses three, and the salience model also uses three elements. Let's now move on to some stakeholder strategies. What can be done stakeholders, with the stakeholders with a view to improving their engagement with the project? Here are some of the things. Uh, good communication with them, very obvious. Sharing WPD, WPI, WPR, or status reports with them. Keep telling them what's happening. Is the project late? Is the project early? Is it over budget, under budget? Invite them to visit the project. Conduct the visit yourself so that they feel a part of the project. Meet with them. Uh, tell them, give them presentations, give them briefings. They feel important and happy and get, and obviously they will feel them getting more involved into the project. Milestone parties are very important. So not just your own project team, invite all the stakeholders, external stakeholders also to these milestone parties. This would also be a step towards networking, which we discussed earlier. These two points I'll take together, giving importance to their advice and responding to their queries properly and correctly. If they give an advice, do not snub them, listen to them, or at least act as if you are listening to them and listening to them actively. So here is another importance of active listening and give importance to their advice. And then if they have any queries, they have asked you any question or they have sought any information from you, then you should do that promptly and accurately. Do not fudge any figures. So it has to be accurate because they are going to quote you. So if you, correct a, if you quote a wrong figure, 
obviously they will quote you. And if you have quoted wrong figures in a, in a printable document, like an email, etc., uh, this can be used against you. So be very careful here. Number one, promptly and correctly. And obviously, if you are an effective project manager, if you're doing everything honestly, you should have absolutely no problems. No problem with prompt and correct responses. Then address their concerns. Uh, they may have noticed something on the project and brought to your notice that uh, this thing they are concerned with. Address their concern. Satisfy them. And if it is being done in the interest of the project, their, uh, their observation perhaps needs modification that you can always discuss with them. Invite them to review meetings if you can. And connected to that is uh, present them with project accounts. They, there is no compulsion to pre them, present them their, uh, present to them your project accounts, but if you really want to be transparent and he's a he's a very important stakeholder then you may have to present project accounts in fact many international companies and multinational companies who are funding projects in pakistan do ask for project accounts so that they feel happy that whatever they are donating it is being spent on a good project uh, on, on good causes or on bona fide expenses. So presenting project accounts for reasons of transparency and it could be the requirement of that donor also. And then resolve the conflict. Don't leave the conflict. Don't pen the conflict. Don't avoid the con uh, conflict. Uh, deal with the conflict. This is called con confronting the conflict. Confronting the conflict means giving a solution, listen to the both parties and give us fair judgment to resolve the, uh, resolve the conflict. And if you do that, uh, it would satisfy both the parties. Then keep reviewing the engagement strategy and stay engaged uh, with the stakeholder. Very important, never burn bridges. There is no final word in stakeholder engagement at the, in the heat of the moment, uh, when the blood pressure rages, it is very easy to burn your boats with the stakeholders. Uh, please do not do that. Uh, you can always be friends. Uh, avoid negative comments or difficult situations and uh, see if you can avoid such comments as this isn't what we wanted, where did you learn your project management from? No, you have to do it this way. Or when this project fails, don't say I didn't warn you, etc. Of course, there are better way of doing things or saying these things. Here is the final slide. What are the manifestations of poor stakeholder engagement? If your stakeholder engagement is weak, it is likely to lead to variances and change requests because there are going to be communication voids. There's going to be miscommunication. And miscommunications, communication voids, etc., lead to variances which lead to change requests. It can even lead to scope creep. And as we have discussed earlier on, scope creep is something which is unwanted on the projects. Then, if you do not network, if do not engage with the stakeholders, if you do not communicate with them, again, because of non-communication, communication voids, communication barriers, or communication blockers, your issue log, issues between you and your stakeholders would start increasing. And your issue log will start swelling. Surely you don't want to do that. And finally, if you do not engage well, there's a chance 
that your stakeholder will become incommunicado or indifferent naraaz ho jayega wo chup kar jayega chup saath lega communication again uh, the aspect of communication barriers and blockers come in and surely you don't want that situation uh, it has also something to do with demotivation uh, or demotivated project team member will become incommunicative he would say o oh, chhodo yaar and this chodo ya is not a good sign for the project so never let the any project team member uh, make this comment keep the project man project management team involved internal state and this also refers to applies to external uh, stakeholders uh, never get into a situation where there is no communication in communicative means no communication through communication barriers or through communication blockers or through communication avoids and then because the stakeholder is incommunicado he is not providing you the required information and this can create delays uh, that ladies and gentlemen uh, brings us to the end of this session uh, thank you for joining me see you next time allah hafiz